Hi everybody, welcome to day three. Today we're going to talk about section two three, rate of change and slope. So by the end of our notes here, you will be calculating rate of change and also the slope of a line. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, rate of change. Rate of change is the ratio that compares one quantity, uh, sorry, ratio that compares how much one quantity changes on average relative to the change in another quantity. So it's a ratio, okay? And one of the key things we have to keep in mind is we always simplify, okay? Always simplify ratios, fractions, all right? So some examples of rate of change would be um, miles per hour. So we're comparing different rates of change, miles per hour, or we could also talk feet per second. Okay, the, the thing with rate of change is we're tacking on units. Okay, so there will be units involved. All right, so let's go ahead to our first example here, discussing rate of change, all right? So, Jack went hiking this afternoon. He left from an elevation of 2,300 feet at 8 a.m. and hiked to an elevation of 5,400 feet at 4 p.m. What was Jack's rate of change in altitude? All right, so what do we have to do? Well, one thing we can do initially is set up some ordered pairs, okay? Because Rate of change is similar to slope, and we're going to talk about that next, but you guys are pretty familiar with that. Okay, so if we're going to think of some ordered pairs, we can talk about it hours, comma, feet. Okay, so if we create some ordered pairs, <clears throat> we've got one ordered pair where at 8 a.m., Jack is 2,300 feet. Okay, that's his elevation. And then at 4 p.m., his elevation is 5,400 feet. Okay, so now we're just going to see how much one quantity changes compared to another quantity. In this case, how much his elevation changes compared to his time. The number of hours okay so what is the difference between 5400 and 2300 okay well you should recognize that he is increasing by 3100 feet and we're going to compare that to okay what's the uh, difference from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. or I should say 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Well, you should recognize that that is eight hours, okay? So in eight hours, he's climbed 3,100 feet. However, I said at the very beginning, we always simplify. So simplify 3,100 over eight, and we should get our final answer of 275 feet per two hours. So every two hours, Jack climbs 275 feet. Okay. All right, let's move down to example two. This is a stop sign problem, so I want you to try it on your own. We'll go ahead and read it together. In the year 2000, 23,142 students applied to Southern Illinois University and 34,689 students applied to Northern Illinois University. 2008, 29,563 students applied to Southern, and 36,107 applied to Northern. Determine the average rate of change in applicants for both schools from 2000 to 2008. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, and try this one on your own. All right, hopefully you had a chance to try this. Okay, so let's go through, and what you should have gotten was at SIU, 
the rate of change was 6,421 applicants in eight years. And that's as good as that gets. It doesn't simplify any further. But at Northern, at NIU, you should have initially gotten 1,418 applicants in eight years. However, this does simplify to 709 applicants every four years. Okay? All right. So if you have questions on that, make sure you come to class tomorrow with them. Okay? All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at example three here. Find the rate of change. So now we're going to compare cost, and let's go ahead and say that the cost is in dollars. Okay? Um, and weight in pounds. We don't really know what we're comparing um, in terms of what weight of what or cost of what, but we know we're comparing pounds and cost. So one thing you have to ask yourself, does it make more sense to say weight or let's, let's change this to um, pounds per dollar or dollar per pound. Think about when we go to the store, if you ever go to the grocery store, have something weighed, which one makes more sense? Hopefully, you recognize that dollar per pound makes most sense, okay, and not this pounds per dollar. All right, so when we're talking about the rate of change here, we want the change in cost, the change in dollars, compared to the change in pounds, the change in weight, okay? So what we should notice is the cost is going up by eight every single time, right? 32 to 40 is also eight, and the weight is going up by 11 pounds each time. 22 to 33 is 11, 33 to 44 is 11, and 44 to 55 is 11. So what is the rate of change here? Well, the rate of change is going to be $8 per 11 pounds. Okay, and there we have it. 8 over 11 doesn't simplify any. So that's as good as it's going to get. All right, so let's go ahead to the next page and we'll talk about slope. Okay, so slope. Slope and rate of change go hand in hand. Slope really goes along with lines, okay? And you're probably very familiar with slope of a line, okay? So let's just quickly talk about it. We'll go through, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can define it. Okay, so the slope of a line, all right, so slope of a line is the ratio of the change in y values compared to the change in x values. Okay. A lot of the times you hear us talk about rise overrun, right? The change in y's over the change in x, okay? So let's quickly go through this slope formula 
with that in mind, okay, so the slope between, or the slope m between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, you should be very familiar with this, we call it m for slope, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay, and then of course we always simplify it, all right? So then we have to talk about undefined slopes versus zero slopes, all right? An undefined slope is going to look like the following. We're going to have our m is equal to a really big rise or any sort of rise over a zero run. So there's no run. Zero is in the denominator. Well, you should recognize whenever there is a zero in the denominator, okay, that tells us that this is undefined. You cannot have zero in the denominator, okay? Do you remember what kind of a line has an undefined slope? Well, it's a vertical line. Hopefully you remember that and you answered before me. Okay, so a vertical line has an undefined slope. All right, so what does a zero slope look like? Well, a zero slope is going to be where m is equal to zero over some sort of run. So you'll have a number in the denominator, but zero in the numerator. Well, when you have zero in the numerator, that just equals zero, okay? So zero over some number equals zero. When zero's in the denominator, that's undefined. So what kind of a line has a zero slope? Hopefully you remember, it's a horizontal line. Okay, so now that we've got that covered, Let's go ahead to these few examples down below, find the slopes of some lines, okay? So, example four, find the slope of the line that passes through one negative three and three five. All right, so hopefully this goes pretty quick for us. We have m is equal to y1, or y2, it really doesn't matter which one you call which. So five minus, our other y is negative three. So it's five minus a negative three over three minus one. So five minus a negative three is like saying five plus three, so we get eight. Over three minus one, we get two. And then you have to ask yourself, is eight over two fully simplified? Hopefully you say no, and then let's simplify it. Eight over two, we get four. So the slope of that line is four. Okay, now let's take a look at the picture. So example five says find the slope of the line pictured. The first thing we wanna do is identify some points on this graph, okay, so we should be able to easily identify these two points. That's going to be negative 1, 4. And this point down here is 1, negative 1. So now that we've identified the two points, it's just like example 4. So let's go ahead and find that slope. Oops, sorry. All right, so here. Here we go. Um, M is equal to... 4 minus that negative 1 over uh, negative 1 minus 1. And what we should get is 5 over negative 2. And 5 over negative 2 does not simplify, so there we have it. Okay? All right, so let's uh, go into a little bit more obscure examples here. Let's look at number six that's not as straightforward. Now this time we wanna find the value of r so that the line that passes through the pair of points has the given slope, okay? So we are given that uh, 
it passes through the point 8, 1 and 5 and some y value that we don't know. But we do know the slope is 1 half. So we're going to use our slope formula, set that up, and solve for r. Okay? So here we go. We know our slope, 1 half, is equal to change in y's, r minus 1, over change in x's, 5 minus 8. Okay? Let's just clean up this 5 minus 8. So we still have 1 over 2 is equal to r minus 1 over negative 3. Okay, how do we solve something like this? Well, hopefully you remember if we have a proportion, we solve by cross multiplying. Okay, so we're going to have negative 3 times 1 is equal to 2 times the quantity r minus 1. All right, and now let's just clean things up. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and then let's go ahead and distribute this 2 to the r, and then the 2 to the negative 1. So we're going to have 2r minus 2. Okay, hopefully we can quickly solve this linear equation, add 2 to both sides, it gives us negative 1 equals 2r divide by 2. We get r is equal to negative 1 over 2. All right? And there we have it. Okay, so what I want you to try now is this last example 7, which is pretty much exactly like number 6. Okay? So go ahead, find the value of r so that the line passes through the pair of points has the given slope. So this time it passes through 8, negative 2, r, negative 6, and you have a slope of negative 4. Give it a try. Okay? All right, hopefully uh, you tried it out, and what you should have gotten was r equals 9. If you didn't get that, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow in class. Otherwise, have a great night, everybody. Bye.